Hi guys, yasas, kakalos irtate, which means hello and welcome in Greek to another episode of Dimitro's Dishes. Today I have a comforting classic for you. We're making suzukakia with patatas pure, which basically means they're basically meatballs that are shaped into almost like sausages, oblong kind of sausages, and they're baked in a luscious tomato sauce, and they can be served with anything, rice, bread, pasta, or mashed potatoes, which is what we're going to serve them with today. The whole meal can be doubled and then it can it freezes well. So you can put it in the freezer and that's also something that we're going to do today. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the food processor because it makes everything so easy, but you can definitely chop up everything by hand. And I'm going to start with four garlic cloves because I am making a double batch. You want the garlic cloves to be very fine. So I'm going to pulse them. They're going to get even more broken down because now I'm going to put lots and lots of fresh parsley in here and pulse it a few times until it's very finely chopped. I didn't mind about leaving some of the bigger stems in there. They're still the fine stems. It's okay. They're going to get chopped up and they have lots of flavor. And that's what it should look like. So I have four pounds of ground beef here. You can use a combination of ground lamb and beef if you want to, or you could do lamb. You could also do poultry and then we're going to need some onion. So I'm going to chop the onion or peel it actually and cut it into quarters. And then I'm going to pulse it in the food processor until it's very finely chopped. That way it saves me time too. I don't have to sit here and finely chop the onion by hand. And these are small onions. So I'm going to do two of these onions at a time. If you overfill the food processor, what happens is it's not going to chop everything um, evenly. And this is what it should look like. You don't want to take it too far where the onion starts to melt and release all of its liquids. So I'm going to add this onion to the meat mixture and then I'm going to pulse and chop up the other two onions. Then we're going to move on. Next, we have the seasonings. We have some salt, crushed red pepper flakes, dried oregano, the characteristic flavoring of suzukakia, which is dried cumin powder, and some black pepper. You can lessen the cumin powder if you're not a big fan. Also, traditionally, um, cinnamon is used, but my kids do not like cinnamon in um, savory foods, so I just leave it out. And that's the best part about cooking. You customize it to your family's taste. Now, before I add the what is it called? <laughs> the panko breadcrumbs. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a mix just to kind of make room for it. Actually, I needed a bigger bowl. Now we have the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are actually the secret ingredient in making a very moist and soft um, meatball and some milk. Now, if you don't have breadcrumbs, you could definitely use a few slices of bread and that will work too. You just have to soak it in the liquid. I, I would soak it in milk or you can soak it in water and then add that to your mixture. That's very commonly used. If you want to leave it gluten-free, some mashed potato would work, as would uh, some gluten-free breadcrumbs, which I see in the supermarket these days. Now, the last ingredient that we're going to add in just a second are um, some eggs. <laughs> just trying to make this work in this bowl so I don't have to dirty one more thing. Two eggs. I'm just going to scramble them a little bit before I add them in so that way they incorporate easily. That looks good. Let me get a little bit of onion that's left in here. And I'm just going to mix this up until everything is very well incorporated. You want to make sure you do this right so that way everything is seasoned properly. You won't have one super salty meatball and then one that's completely unseasoned. You know what I'm saying? Take off my ring. Nobody wants, nobody wants raw meat in their jewelry. Mix this all up. And look, if you cook with gloves on at home, this is the point where, before this point is where you would put on gloves to mix this. Um, I'd rather just wash my hands. They're super clean. So you want to take a little handful of meat. You can make these as big or as small as you want. You could even keep them round, but these are traditionally made long like sausages. So you're going to roll it up first into a ball and then you can just shape it in your hand or you could roll it on the cutting board into like a kebab, a little sausage, whatever you want to call it. 
just like this and you place it in the tray. We're gonna pan, we're gonna fry these in a little bit, but if you want to, you can definitely broil them in the oven. You could just brush them with some oil and put them under the broiler for like five minutes on each side or even less, just until they get some color. You don't want them to cook through because they cook in the sauce and they become so comforting and delicious and moist. You will see. Okay, so this recipe is four pounds of beef, so it made about 30 suzukakia. Now we're gonna make the delicious sauce, which is so simple. It requires one clove of garlic. I'm making one batch of the sauce because um, I'm not gonna make extra sauce to freeze, even though you could. You can make a double batch of the sauce, but you can also substitute pasta sauce for it, store-bought. So in a saucepan, you wanna put about three to four tablespoons of olive oil and one grated garlic clove. And since the pot is hot, I'm not gonna waste any time because I don't want the garlic to burn. I have a can, a 28 ounce can. Ooh, that's bubbling everywhere. You do not wanna get burned with that. A 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes that I've actually pureed because the kids in this house like their tomato sauce smooth, so that's what I do. I just puree the tomatoes. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it because we don't waste. And I'm gonna get all of that sauce out. I'm actually gonna add a tiny bit more. There we go, it's gonna boil away and it's gonna thicken. It's gonna take a few extra minutes. Then, um, tomato sauce is acidic, or crushed tomatoes are acidic, so I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of sugar. You could do honey instead. I'm also gonna add half a teaspoon of cumin powder. Traditionally, cinnamon goes in, but we already talked about my kids and cinnamon and how they don't like it. <laughs> so they only like it in dessert. So I did cumin instead. Season with a little bit of salt, some black pepper, and because I like a little heat, I'm going to put a few crushed red pepper flakes in there, and a bay leaf. And because I don't have my spatula, I'm just going to give this a mix. I'm going to put it back over the heat. I'm gonna bring this to a boil, then I'm gonna reduce the heat to medium and I'm gonna cover it. And I'm gonna let it cook until it's nice and thick, which it's gonna take about 10 minutes. Next, I have a cast iron skillet heating over medium heat. I like using cast iron because it retains heat beautifully. So once the oil is nice and hot, you're gonna go ahead and put the suzukakia in and you're gonna fry them just a few minutes on each side, like maybe two to three minutes on each side. You're just looking for color. We're not cooking them through. And if they're falling apart, like if they're starting to crack, you can just press them back together. And they'll be fine. All right, so these are the ones that I'm gonna be baking today and they're ready. Now we just have to combine everything. And these are the extras, so Pretty much a little less than half are left over. I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna talk about them in a little bit. The sauce is also ready. It's nice and thick. I didn't thicken it that much because it is gonna bake in the oven a little bit. Now you wanna go ahead and taste it and if it needs more salt or if it's too acidic and it needs a little bit more sugar, you can add that or even honey. And now I'm just gonna add some dried oregano. You can do basil, you can do parsley. Whatever your favorite herbs are, I just, oregano is so Greek, so I'm just gonna put that in there and mix it in. And now at this part, at this point, I'm just gonna make a little bit of room. Let's, cause I want most of the sauce on the bottom. So let me move some of these suzukakia out of the pan and then I'll just put them back in. Whoops. Okay, so I'm gonna pour the sauce right here. If you wanted to, you could have even cooked this in the cast iron skillet that you cooked, um, that you fried the suzukakia in, so that way you don't dirty anything. Let's get all of the sauce out. Now, if you want more sauce, definitely make a double batch. It all depends on how big your portions are and how many suzukake you're making. I kind of stretched it with this big pan. This sauce would have been good enough for maybe 
we have how many, like 17 or 18 suzukake in here. It would have been good for probably like 12 or 13, but we will make it work. And um, if you want more sauce, add more sauce. Let's shake this a little bit. That way the sauce can go everywhere. Actually, this looks perfect. That is what it looks like. Now, in Greece, they make this two ways. You can finish it off in the oven like we're going to do, or you could have done it on the stovetop. So in the same pan that the sauce was uh, cooking in, obviously, you're going to have to transfer it to a larger one so that the suzukake can hold. You, can have, you, could have, you could definitely add the suzukake to the sauce and make, cook it like you would uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Minus the spaghetti, <laughs> you know, the sauce, right? Cook the meat, cook the suzukake in the sauce. But I really like the way it tastes when it roasts in the oven for a little bit. So it's preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to bake this in the oven for 30 minutes until the sauce is bubbly and thick and the suzukake are fully cooked through. At the end, you can go in and put some uh, feta in there, not traditional but definitely delicious and you bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to do that. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as they're ready. So while the suzukake are baking in the oven, we're going to make the mashed potatoes. So I have five rusted potatoes here. You can use golden or all rusted or a combination of both. And I'm just going to cut them into even sized pieces like cubes. And then just add them to a pot um, that has cold water in it. Season them with some salt. And we're going to bring this to a boil. And then we're going to let these boil on for about eight minutes or so or until they're fork tender. And then we're going to drain the water out and put everything all together. There are a few things that you could do with the leftover suzukake. You can pan fry these make some extra sauce and let everything come to room temperature and put it in a tray all together and then freeze it. You can do that, that way you can just take the tray out, thaw it overnight and then bake them just like we did right now. You'll have a meal that's ready in the freezer, that way you don't have to do anything to it other than put it in the oven and of course thaw it out. If you were to do that, make sure you wrap the tray tightly in plastic wrap and then some foil. And before baking it, you obviously remove the plastic wrap, right? But I don't have time to fry and do all that right now. So I'm just going to freeze these just like I would meatballs. I'm going to put these on a few baking trays. Once they're frozen solid, I'm going to transfer them into some freezer bags and they're going to be ready to go in the freezer whenever I need them. I can grill them, I can make the same dish, or I can just do a, a million other things with them. But they're going to be ready in my freezer, ready to go, and I just thaw them out and use them in whatever recipe I need them in. And I love to have a nicely packed freezer because there are so many busy days. I know that you have them, I definitely have loads of them, and I love to find meals in my freezer that I could just pull out and just with a few extra steps, I have dinner on the table. The best way to make really creamy mashed potatoes is with this potato ricer. I will put the link down below as well as on the blog post where you can get it if you don't already have one. It's fairly inexpensive and it just gets the potatoes into such a tiny rice. They look like rice, as you can see. That's why it's called a ricer. And this helps them blend very easily and, and evenly, which is really important in mashed potatoes where you won't over end up over mixing them. So pass them through the ricer while they're still hot. And I like this one because it has this grip over here which just makes it really easy to pass the potatoes through. Alright, so next you want to have some milk, half and half, heavy cream, whatever your choice of liquid is. Over here I have about a cup and a quarter of half and half and I'm going to add a little bit at a time with some butter that's soft enough that it's almost melted basically. I know I'm going to use this whole stick of butter and you want to make sure that your ingredients are soft and warm or at room temperature so that way they can blend right into the mashed potatoes to create a very smooth and creamy mashed potato. And then we're going to season with a little bit of salt, so actually a lot of salt. Potatoes just absorb that salt and they definitely need it. And then I'm also going to add some black pepper. And some people put grated garlic in their mashed potato. I feel like the flavor of grated garlic is very sharp and too intense. I, us I usually have a little bag of roasted garlic in my freezer. It's basically garlic cloves that have been roasted with a little bit of salt and olive oil. And then I just puree them and it just gives a really nice sweet 
just a very good garlic. You get the garlic flavor, but without that little bite to it. Just mix everything all up. And all you need is a wooden spoon or a spatula. Oh, it smells so good. That roasted garlic is amazing in here. And I'm gonna add some more liquid because it seems like a lot of liquid, but the potatoes soak it all up and it helps them stay creamy and smooth. And you just want to taste as you go. Mmm. A little more salt. And the rest of this half and half. And we don't double dip, so I'm getting another spoon. Mmm. So good. That is perfect. This is what it should look like. It might look a little bit thin, but keep in mind it's going to sit and it's going to absorb all of that liquid and it is just going to be perfect and creamy and so delicious. And that's it. Mashed potatoes are ready. I'm going to get the suzukake out of the oven and we're going to get our meal together. So the meal is ready. Now the mashed potatoes are done, super creamy. The suzukake are out of the oven. You're just going to want them to settle down just a little bit. Now I forgot to add the feta cheese while it was baking in the last five minutes. That's when you want to go in and add it so it can soften because I was multitasking and trying to keep everything clean. But you can also serve feta on the side or you could put it just the way I did sprinkle a little bit on top. Put it on the plate with some mashed potatoes and it is time to give it a taste. Mmm. Comfort food. This is like the pinnacle of comfort food. Creamy mashed potatoes. That roasted garlic makes all the difference. The suzukakia melt in your mouth. They're so soft. That sauce is rich and just delicious. So good. It is naglipistadactylasu, which means to lick your fingers. That's what we say when, it's some, when something is that good. Now, I would serve this with a nice green salad, like amarulo salata. If you're serving it for a dinner party, your starter can be like a zucchini pie, like the kolokithopita, kolo some tzatziki on the side, and a salad, maybe with some bread, and you are good to go. Get this recipe in the description box down below with all of the ingredients, also on demetriusdishes.com. Learn how to make the green salad and all the fixings that go with this by clicking over here, and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.